Loki's eyes were eager and his eyes were full of fighting spirit, I've wanted to challenge you for a long time. Emer. Ha ha ha. I have long heard that Prince Loki has the strongest talent among the giants and has the qualifications of a king. Now I want to see it. Emer's fists collided, and thick calluses wrapped the fists, making a loud banging sound. Bring it on. Boom. Another stronger stone pier was placed between the two of them. The terrifying gravity penetrated it, and a deep pit was directly smashed into the ground. Boom. Boom. There were two loud noises one after another, the ruthless iron elbow embedded into the surface, the two people's palms came together, and the crisp sound echoed around. During the struggle, both of them had ferocious faces. The sleeves on their arms had long since turned into debris, and green dragons were winding around their arms. Stalemate. In the ongoing stalemate. The cheers of the surrounding giants became louder and louder. One was the strongest warrior of the giant clan at present, and the other was the heir to the giant kingdom. Is it the alternation of old and new? Or is it the continuation of glory? The evolution of the giant kingdom is very interesting. At the beginning, there were giant villages scattered across the land of Elbaf. Each village was independent but united with each other. Just like Charlotte Lin Lin when she was a child, she lived in one of the giant villages. This situation was improved until the emergence of Fabudi. The land of Elbaf, which had been fighting endless battles, finally got a brief rest and recuperation and the kingdom of giants also rose up in this land. As the heir of Elbaf, Loki naturally carries a lot of expectations. This time Loki stepped forward not only to establish his position in Elbaf, but also to get a promise from his father. After all, the relationship between their giant clan and that demon is incompatible. Therefore, he has a reason to win. Thinking of this, Loki's eyes suddenly became extremely sharp, the black thunder disillusioned, the air shook faintly, and the strength in his hands became more and more terrifying. The eyes are nice, but they remind me of a kid named Hale Din. Emer clenched his teeth, and gradually began to feel a little labored. Every word seemed to leak out from between his teeth. This kid is really powerful. Ah oh! Appeared, the legendary qualifications of a king. Is this conqueror's hockey? Only one person in a million has the qualifications. Then, if I use conquerors to attack Emer, will I be able to win easily? Hey! Don't insult the honor of the giants. There's no way Prince Loki would do such a thing. If they say they should compete in strength, then they can only compete in strength. What they want is not the result of the battle, but to enjoy the process of fighting. Look. The winner is about to be decided. In the field, the balance of victory began to tilt slowly, Loki gradually gained the upper hand, and Emer's arm folded back bit by bit. Click. The crisp sound of bones dislocating sounded, the stone pillar in the middle collapsed again, and the previous scene was recreated again. I won. After lifting Emer up, Loki looked excited and couldn't help shouting to the sky, beating his chest and stamping his feet. Very good, it seems you have a great air. Farbudi. A giant wearing a horn helmet smiled at Farbudi next to him. The man's beard and hair are all white, and his curly beard hangs down to the ground. There is a bit of old Madara on his cheek, which proves that the man is at least 300 years old. The lifespan of the giant family is three times that of humans, and their growth cycle is also very long. Just like Prince Loki, he is 56 years old this year, but he is only equivalent to a young man in his twenties among humans. A smile appeared on Fabudi's majestic face, there are no cowards among the giants. I have always believed that Loki will be a qualified heir, Elder Jeryl. Jeryl, one of the captains of the original giant pirates, is a pirate known as, Mountain Beard. He is currently the oldest warrior in the world and has exceeded the lifespan limit of the giant race. However, judging from his appearance, there is a high probability that he will not last long. 
However, as a hero of the giants, Elbaf's status is very special and noble. Father. At this moment, Loki suddenly shouted to Farbudi on the throne, Can I make a request of you? Okay, the giants keep their promises the most. Farbudi nodded with a smile. He wanted to see why his son, who had always been Loki, suddenly changed so much. The rest of the giants also looked forward eagerly, their eyes following Loki's lips that were about to open. I want to propose to Lola. Under the gaze of countless eyes, Loki's words echoed throughout the festival. Ha ha ha. What did I say? It turns out that I have the same idea as Hela. Sure enough, even the brave giant warriors still can't cross the gentle land of women. Eh. By the way, which Elbaf girl is Lola? It seems. I've never heard of it. I have no impression either. This girl, doesn't seem to be from Elbaf. Could it be that she is a living giant? The noisy discussion became more and more intense, and the fire of eight trigrams burned brightly in the hearts of the giants. Since ancient times, wine and women have always been a constant topic in this sea. She is not a resident of Elbaf, nor is she a giant. A sweet smile began to appear on Loki's face, but when I saw her by chance, I was convinced that I would never fall in love with anyone else again. Seeing Loki's defeated posture, Fabudi on the throne finally lost his composure, who is this Lola? Her name is Lola, but she also has another identity. Loki showed a hint of pain on his face, but he still gritted his teeth and said, she is Big Mom's daughter. Upon hearing Loki's announcement, the giant suddenly fell into an eerie silence, and then started talking in disbelief. We, should have heard correctly, right? Prince Loki, what did you say? Big M.O.M. That demon. Seems to be. Is Lola the daughter of the devil? Big M.O.M., an enemy that the giants will always remember. When he was only five or six years old, he killed their giant hero Joral. Although under the mediation of Sister Carmelo, the giants did not execute Big Mom, an irresolvable bond was formed between the two. Hatred. Big Mom, who founded the pirate group, has never given up his coveting of the giants while overlooking the new world. All in all, this is an enemy remembered for generations, an existence called a demon by the giants of Elbaf. No. Absolutely impossible. The person who reacted the most intensely was undoubtedly, Mountain Beard, Jarl. As one of the captains of the giant pirates, Jarl and Jorl have a close brotherhood and a lifelong friendship. However, Jorl died at the hands of that demon. And now, the hope of their giant clan, the future heir of Elbaf. You actually want to marry that devil's daughter? How can Jarl not hate this? This is enough for the giants to remember their hatred for a lifetime. How could this guy just turn around and forget about it? Father, the giants never break their promises. Loki had anticipated this situation for a long time, and when it came to the end, he became calmer. Regardless of whether Farbudi agreed or not, he was determined to get married. Anyway, he had already thought of a countermeasure. At the worst possible outcome, he would ask the red-haired group to help him propose the marriage. Do you know what you're talking about, Loki brat? Feeling the anger that was about to explode in his chest, Gerald asked in a deep voice, his turbid eyes like a beast that chooses people to eat, bursting out with ferocious murderous intent, staring at Loki. With his qualifications and status, there is no need to call Loki a prince, but out of recognition for Fabudi, he has always been generous with the title. Now calling Loki a brat, he was obviously very angry. I know what I'm doing, but I think the hatred of the previous generation should not be extended to the next generation, and Lola is Lola, and Big M.O.M. is Big M.O.M. There is no way she can represent Lola's will. Loki said calmly. Although he only glanced at her from a distance, he was naturally keen and could sense that Lola's will to be free was what attracted him the most. Humph. Even so. Gerald wanted to say something more, but was rudely interrupted by Loki, have you forgotten the glory of the giants? Gerald was speechless. 
The giants are a race that values glory more than life, and glory more than life and death. He had previously promised that he could grant the winner a promise, but now it became a reason that could not be refused. It actually gave Gerald a feeling of something stuck in his throat. I promise you, but whether it succeeds or not is not up to me. Fabudi, who had not spoken for a long time, spoke up and made the final decision. New World, G, 5 Base. Ein, who had just returned from his inspection tour, strode towards the base director's office with his clothes stained with blood and filled with murderous aura. Atlas Admiral has just captured the Shukri pirates, with a total bounty of 300 million. Ein reported loudly. This was the first time she personally arrested a pirate in the New World. Although she did not kill the captain, the sense of participation made her very accomplished. Atlas looked through the information in his hand without making any move. He had long been used to it. As his adjutant, Ein had his tacit permission to enter the office without knocking. Female pirate? Atlas raised his eyebrows slightly. Even in the pirate world, the physical differences between men and women exist objectively. Among pirates, female pirates who can become captains are very rare. Just like there is only one big mom among the sea emperors, there is only one boa Hancock among the Shichibukai. Talking about existence regardless of quantity is just a hooliganism. Yes, she is the squeezer who ate the fruits of the squeeze. I nodded. Juicer girl. If the devil fruit is really conscious, Atlas suspects that the devil inside the fruit is definitely an old pervert. He remembered that the last ability user also died at his hands, and it was Smoothie who was supposed to become the dessert general. But obviously, her ability development is not as good as Smoothie. Otherwise, he wouldn't be easily defeated by a combination like Smoker and Iron. Ha! Huh. Atlas Admiral, what did you say? Ein vaguely heard Atlas's murmur and was a little stunned. Nothing, just prepare the permanent pointer to Tato land. Atlas placed the information in his hand in front of Ein and gave casual instructions. As an adjutant should be aware, Ein's eyes quickly scanned the information. The red hair pirates may conflict with the big mom pirates. How did these two pirate groups get together? It stands to reason that New World has a lot of territory now, so there is no need at all. The current situation in New World is this. Big BOM shrinks its territory, beasts, Kaido huddles in Wanakuni, relying on the terrain like a natural chasm to grow insignificantly. Marines' military expenditures were restricted by the world government, and it was difficult for the military to occupy the New World's territory, so a large number of unclaimed lands were born and were firmly occupied by some scattered pirate groups. If the red-haired man wants to become emperor, he just needs to defeat these pirate groups and gain territory. Then bribe that guy Morgans, wouldn't it be natural for the third sea emperor to be born? As far as I knows, although the red hair pirates have not deliberately expanded, the power of their large fleet cannot be underestimated. I don't know. The world government's CP no longer shares information with Marine. This information was passed on by a sword member. Atlas could probably guess a little bit. The red haired guy needs to build momentum and reach the top of the emperor in an absolute manner, so that the balance on the sea can be maintained. The Emperor of the Sea doesn't just have to be acknowledged by Morgans. Strength and power are indispensable. The red-haired guy talks about the balance of the sea all day long, plus he can meet the five elders alone in private, so it's hard for people not to doubt his identity. On Red Force The red-haired man was holding a phone bug, and next to him was a group of attentive pirates. Shanks, I want to ask you to do me a favor. The voice was a little twitchy, but firm. What's the deal? I promised you. Shanks agreed directly. Eh. You didn't ask me what my request was. You're not afraid. Aren't we friends? Loki. Shanks grinned widely. Friends. Loki was stunned for a moment, then smiled and said, Yes, we are friends, please help me propose marriage. Eh. Propose marriage? 
It sounds really romantic. Ha ha ha. It seems we haven't tried it yet. Oh, proposing marriage? What an interesting experience. Promise him, Captain. The pirates next to me looked excited, and they all shouted. Who is the target? Shanks asked, suppressing a smile. Big Mom's daughter, Lola. Loki's calm and expectant voice echoed on the Red Force deck. Tato Land Sea Area, Coco Island. This is a chocolate-themed island, and the entire island exudes a tempting sweetness. The Charlotte who manages Coco Island is the Minister of Chocolate, Charlotte Lola. At this time, the central castle. A round table was placed in the center, and three indescribable figures sat down. Two of them appeared to be twins, with strange-looking faces, full lips and muscular bodies. There were two blushes on his face, he was wearing a black bowler hat, and his pink braids were spread out. Charlotte Lola, Charlotte Chiffon. Sitting at the head of the table was their father, Yunu. This is a man with a big face but a small body. He is the 25th husband of Charlotte Lin Lin, who had been buried in the Forest of Temptation on Cake Island. But the previous battle shattered the entire Cake Island into pieces. Fortunately, Wu Nu survived and hid under a floating island to join the Charlotte family. The abnormal Charlotte Lin Lin did not imprison him, and now Katakuri has the final say over the entire Charlotte family. Even the most experienced baguette dare not make mistakes. Will you marry Loki of the Giants? Looking at the two silent daughters present, Wu Nu asked cautiously. He was abandoned by Big Mom after Lola and Chifun were born. He was full of guilt for these two daughters. For such a major life event, he naturally fully respected her wishes, Katakuri also said just now, as long as you don't want to, no one can force you. If it were the original Big M.O.M., he might have agreed without even saying a word. As for Lola's wishes, does it matter? For Big Mom, to make the giant a member of all nations, she can sacrifice all her children. For her, her children are just talking tools. Lola thought for a long time and then slowly spoke. I don't want to. What I pursue is a free marriage. I don't like this kind of meaningless political marriage. After saying that, she let out a long sigh, as if she wanted to let out the frustration in her heart. If Loki pursues her normally, maybe she will develop a relationship with him. But the other party directly proposed to the Charlotte family through the giant clan, which made her feel like she had become a victim of a political marriage. She has seen this kind of thing too many times. For Big Mon, her daughter without talent is her weapon to win over powerful people. Lola didn't want to be such a victim. However, the sexy operation she didn't expect was yet to come. To make sure nothing goes wrong, Rocky also entrusted red hair pirates to go to Tato land to propose. In his opinion, with the importance Big M.O.M. has always shown for the giant race, he will definitely agree to this proposal. Sister, I support you. Chi Foam also said in support. Tato land, offshore. Red Force marches slowly. At the side of the ship, the pirates were lying on the side, making sounds of exclamation from their mouths. Is this the territory of the Sea Emperor? It's the first time I've seen it. It smells really sweet. It seems that Big M.O.M. is indeed like a legend and is extremely obsessed with desserts. Speaking of which, boss, should we make our base camp as grand as that when we get there? Ha 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 ha. New World, G-5 Base Atlas took the permanent pointer to Tato Land for mine and began to look at it with interest. Speaking of which, he has obtained this broken pointer no less than twice. In other words, Marine is a bit richer. If you were a pirate and wanted to buy a permanent pointer, the waiting time would be long enough, regardless of whether it was available or not. Maybe by the time he gets the pointer and gets there, the battle will be over. Feeling the residual warmth on his hands, Ein couldn't help but blush on his face, but he still pretended to be calm and said. Atlas Admiral, are you planning to go over and get involved? Obviously, 
Atlas does not intend to let go of this opportunity to inflict heavy damage to the Big Mom pirates again. That's right. Atlas raised the corner of his mouth with a slightly ferocious arc, by the way, I called Sakazuki, Kuzan, and Garp, old man, if they are interested in going together. After suffering such a big loss last time, the old man from Big M.O.K. actually came back from the dead. This time he not only wanted to find out, but also uprooted the two pirate groups. No matter how bad it is. Also let them become polished commanders. It see Circle Calendar 1515, and this red-haired guy is definitely qualified to challenge Big M.O.M. He's really not sure on his own. Ben Beckman is not a vegetarian either. He is a man who can make Kazara say, so scary, with just one musket. Have you forgotten? Ein was a little surprised. Didn't Kazan Admiral take leave last time? He also passed by our base. It seems that there is such a thing. Atlas was a little impressed. That guy seemed to have been asking for leave frequently in the past few months. He seemed very anxious, and he didn't know what he was looking for. He ran to West Blue every two days. Forget it, Sakazuki must be interested too, right? He waved his hand, took the permanent pointer on his hand, and strode out of the office door. He looked extremely comfortable. Tato Land Sea Area Coco Island The entire Tato Land Sea Area is centered on Cake Island, with 34 islands scattered around. By coincidence, the place where the Red Hair Pirates landed was Coco Island. As for Tato Land, which lost home ice vigilance, although it did not intercept in advance in the first place, its response was extremely fast. This is not. Katakuri and a group of Charlotte family brothers and sisters formed a row and stopped in front of the Red Hair Pirates. Red Hair Pirates. What do you want to do when you land in Tato Land? Katakuri frowned, his face a little gloomy, and he held the Earth Dragon Trident tightly in his hand. Charlotte Lin Lin was placed in the castle on Coco Island by him, staying with Yunu and his daughter. It is still not appropriate for Big M.O.M. in this state to frequently appear in the public view of the sea. Only by maintaining a sense of mystery can it obtain sufficient deterrence. He had the impression that Red Hair Pirates, a rising pirate star who had become famous in the New World over the years, was known as a man who was expected to compete for the next Emperor of the Sea. But what does this guy want to do when he suddenly visits Tato Land? Could it be that he wants to take advantage of the emptiness inside and outside the Big Mom pirates and step on their foreheads to become the Emperor of the Sea? Thinking of this, Katakuri's eyes suddenly turned as cold as ice, are you declaring war on Mom? Ah, don't get me wrong, I was just asked by my friend to propose marriage to Lola. Shank's eyes widened instantly and he hurriedly explained. Yes, we are here to propose marriage. Ha 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 ha. I heard that your sister Lola has fascinated Loki so much that she doesn't want to eat or drink. Lousy wants to see what kind of beauty she is. The faces of the red hair pirates were full of promiscuity, and they all showed expressions that all men would understand. Let a group of pirates come over to propose marriage, and you really are the one, Loki. Katakuri exerted a slight force on his arm, and the sharp earth dragon trident sank deeply into the ground below, you go back, Lola has already rejected this marriage. Ah, uh, do you reject it so simply? Don't you think about it anymore? Shanks touched the straw hat on his head and looked at Katakuri in surprise, seemingly unaware of the other person's unhappy mood. Give me some face, think about it for a few days before giving an answer, otherwise it will be difficult for me to explain to Loki. He curled his lips with a distressed expression. Shut up. Idiot, letting you stand here is already giving you face. If you don't leave, you will stay here forever. Katakuri's forehead protruded, and cross-shaped veins popped out. He looked at the smiling red-haired group with evil eyes. Normally, he would have rushed forward and killed these arrogant guys without saying a word. Between pirates, rashly entering each other's territory is definitely a naked provocation. Even though the red-haired pirates had been prosperous over the years, 
and his knowledge told him that the playful and smiling man in front of him was anything but simple. However, if these guys confront Big M.O.M., they will only be defeated in the end. There are only two kinds of strong people in this world, generals and others. But it's hard to say how successful Big Mom can be now, because her current character seems to be too harmless. What nonsense are you talking to him about? He's just an arrogant newcomer. This guy must be taught a lesson, otherwise where will my mother's face be put? He 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 he, even if our Big Mom pirates suffer heavy losses, it's not like cats and dogs can provoke us. When the leaders of the Charlotte family saw each other's playful attitude, they suddenly became furious. Being defeated by a marine continuously has already accumulated a lot of anger in their stomachs. Now that these blind people insist on getting together, they will have no choice but to let go. Ah hey hey. Don't be too arrogant, we are not afraid of your big mom pirates. Boss, do you want to fuck them? The old woman doesn't seem to be here. Naturally, the members of Red Hair Pirates were not to be outdone, and they got angry one after another. Yasop frowned and quickly loaded the musket in his hand with bullets. My experience tells me that the old woman should not be careless on this island. Something's wrong, Beckman lit a cigarette, took a deep breath, and exhaled slowly, it seems something happened to Big Mom himself. The last time Bai Jian attacked Tato Land, it definitely didn't end that easily. He knows very well, based on the rumored temper of Big Mom. There are only two things that can happen, either happily agree to the marriage and then kill them. Or, kill them directly. The Emperor of the Sea is not a kind person. Rice Cake Blade Bullet Katakuri's eyes were focused, and he raised his index finger and thumb, and brought the other fingers together. The entire palm suddenly turned into a white glutinous ball, and the armor color hardened on the top of the index finger. He understood that he could not continue like this. This was not in line with the style of the Big Mom pirates and would definitely arouse suspicion among the cunning pirates. Call out. The glutinous bullets wrapped around Haki leapt out from his fingertips and headed straight for Shank's face. New World, the sea area near G-7 base. A blood-stained warship was cruising on the sea. The bow of the ship, like a sharp spear, was powerful on the sea, setting off waves of white waves. Sakazuki Admiral. Your call. The voice of the communication soldier was extremely loud, but it did not waver the sentry on guard at all. His sharp eyes were like bayonets, patrolling the surrounding environment. Akainu took the call without saying a word, hello. I'm Atlas, are you interested in doing something big? Atlas's voice came from the microphone. What's the matter? The curve of Akainu's mouth softened slightly, and he asked curiously. Among the entire marines, Atlas was the one that suited him the most. With his character, he would never be too trivial if he dared to say big things. Didn't you kill two cadres in Tato Land Waters last time? Are you still satisfied? Atlas said with a half smile. You mean, Go again. Akainu was moved, those five old men will definitely stop it. Haha <laughs> who cares about them, do we still care now? This is an excellent opportunity. Atlas followed the temptation, this is a collision between two big pirate groups. If we go over and take advantage, we might be able to take advantage of the situation and catch them all in one fell swoop. Two big pirate groups. Big M.O.M. Pirates and Red Hair Pirates Although Akainu and the others attach great importance to the sudden rise of the Red Hair Pirates, they do not believe that the still young Shanks can challenge the status of the old Sea Emperor. After all, this guy is only 32 years old now. The strength between them. Don't worry, we can just go over and end the battle. I believe in the strength of the Red Hair Pirates. Okay. I'll be there right away. After hanging up the phone, Akainu turned to look at the adjutant, give me the order to change direction and go to Tato land. But we're not going to. The adjutant hesitated. Change the combat plan, postpone the mission there first, 
and let the base send some troops to investigate the situation. Akainu's tone was a little stiff. Things have priorities. Although they are all pirates, Tato Land is obviously more worthy of his visit. If the Big Mom pirates can be defeated this time, or the Red Hair pirates can be severely damaged, it will be a powerful tranquilizer for Marine at the moment. Let those scum who dream of going to see know. There is no way out for pirates. Even the so-called Emperor of the New World had no choice but to flee when Marine rounded him up, and was even beaten to death on the spot. Holy Land Mariehua. Hanga City, Among the Flowers. The Void Throne hangs at the highest point, with various weapons sunk into the ground underneath. The five elders, who used to be majestic in the past, are lined up in a row, with respectful faces and one knee kneeling towards the apex. Suddenly, there was an exchange of light and darkness. On the originally empty throne, a figure appeared at some point. Lord Im. The five elders said respectfully in unison. Like the most devout believer, showing the most sincere fanaticism. A new threat has emerged in Marine. Is it related to the three ancient weapons? The black shadow on the void throne slowly sat down, his eyes lowered, looking down at the five elders below. In the dimness, a pair of red pupils with thin circles could be vaguely seen, and they seemed to be wearing a huge crown. He is not the light, not Uranus. Nor Pluto. Im's eyes did not waver, and he seemed not to be interested in threats other than the three ancient weapons. Human beings have limits. After saying this, Im said no more. Seeing this situation, even though they were full of doubts, the five old men had to withdraw from the flower room. They know very well what Im said, human beings, have their limits. No matter how much you exercise, there is a threshold for the human body to become stronger. Once this threshold is reached, no matter what age you are, your strength will stagnate. Just like how powerful Rox was before, but facing two top combat powers, he still had to hate the Valley of the Gods. But the three ancient weapons are different. Each one has the power to destroy the world. There is a horror beyond the human body. Therefore, no matter how powerful that guy is, he cannot pose a threat to Lord Im. But. Is this guy really not related to ancient weapon? Dexter Saint slightly straightened the black hat on his head and couldn't help but break the silent atmosphere between them. Are you questioning Lord Im? You know that's not what I meant. That guy is really a little abnormal. He is obviously not a fruit user, but he possesses extraordinary power. Yeah, if one or two of the abilities he showed at the beginning can be used to deal with special racial talents, but several of his abilities can no longer be explained. Then what can we do now? That guy didn't show any rebellious psychology against the world government, and he's strong enough. Instead, it's that guy Sengoku. Saint Nazarov continued, since the last family home incident, it seems that Sengoku guy has not taken the initiative to report to us. He is probably expressing his dissatisfaction. Humph. You and I know very well what happened last time. Although Marine's senior management seems to be pretending that nothing happened, they must have thought of what happened to Zephyr, right? Looks like it's time to take action against Marine. Start. Do you want to? That's right, Sengoku and the others are getting old and should abdicate to young people. What if they resist? You have to know that people like Sengoku and Garp are not simple characters. No, they have been bound by the so-called justice. As long as they have any scruples, they will have no way to live towards death. Then when should we take action? After all, Marine is getting more and more difficult to control now, and it is indeed time to reshuffle the deck. Wait. Wait for them to make a mistake. The five old men walked towards the center of power while discussing strategies to deal with Marine. In fact, Marine now feels a little out of control, both in terms of actions and strength. Including Zephyr, who lives in seclusion behind the scenes, there are eight top-level combatants in Marine. This is an extremely terrifying number, and there is also that guy by Jin. Explosion, 
invisibility, fluttering, instant healing. There are more and more terrifying abilities that they have to be afraid of. If that doesn't work, it's necessary for them to invite Lord M, to start cleaning up the world. Not bad power. Shank's eyes lit up and he was about to take a step forward to intercept the speeding bullet. However, a voice from behind stopped him directly, Hey! Boss, if you still need to take action against this kind of thing, are you looking down on us? Boom! As soon as he finished speaking, a roar exploded from his ears, and a bullet entangled with armament hockey came out. Boom! The two collided and the black bullets directly broke through the rice cake blades and went straight to everyone in the Charlotte family. Invisible air waves spread out and turned into circles in the air. He 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 he, candy wall. Perispero focused his gaze, and a wall of pink candy rose up on the spot, intercepting the bullet. When the shriveled bullet shells fell to the ground, making a crisp impact sound, and everyone present couldn't help but turn their attention to the guy from Red Hair Pirates who was squealing. Call. He raised the gun, pointed it at the smoking muzzle and blew gently, and white smoke floated away. How's it going? Boss? Yasup asked Shanks for credit. Sniper. Katakuri's face darkened. He didn't expect that he originally wanted to give the opponent a blow, but he didn't expect to be defeated. An unknown guy was able to resist his attack easily. Now that war has been declared. Shank straightened his face, took out the long knife from the waist of the boy next to him, and raised it high, sending out a bone-chilling chill through the sunlight, then I will fight with you. Boom! A huge vibration suddenly came from the ground, and a large number of glutinous balls appeared under Katakuri's feet, compressing downwards and then bursting out. The powerful power pushed the body out in an instant, and the earth dragon trident in his hand quickly flipped over, covering it with an armed color. Under the flash of cold light, it stabbed straight towards Shanks. Seeing this, other members of the Charlotte family also used their respective fruit abilities, Five Flowers Eight Gate. The huge candy man rises from the ground, and the white cream squirms. Shanks pressed the straw hat on his head slightly to prevent it from being blown away by the strong wind. He suddenly clenched the long knife in his hand, turned his waist and abdomen, and swung it out. Black lightning appeared in the air, cracks traveled, and a faint whine came from the long knife, as if it could not withstand this powerful force. God avoids. Today, he is finally able to fully perform Roger's original move. Boom. The air wave exploded, and the long knife in his hand exploded instantly, turning into debris all over the sky, engulfing Katakuri. The terrifying blade storm was like streams of light, leaving dense, crisscrossing gaps on the body. Scarlet blood splashed out, and the blast of air directly knocked Katakuri's tall body away. Ah! As expected, Griffin is more comfortable. Shanks glanced at the only remaining sword hilt in his hand and complained helplessly. Boss, you are using my knife. A pirate suddenly withdrew from the battle, looked at his captain with a sad face, and almost stabbed Shanks in front of Shanks with a pair of scarred fists. I'm really sorry. I'll make it up to you next time. On the other side, the pirates of the Charlotte family were stunned when they saw Katakuri being blown away. Hey, hey. Hey! Did I read that correctly? Katakuri and I, I, he. One move, another move, that red haired guy's strength is already on the same level as my mother. Why do these monsters appear one after another? They are obviously not very old. Katakuri, this man is known as the greatest masterpiece of the Charlotte family. Since his debut, he has never lost. Until, I met that Marine. But the people in the Charlotte family firmly believe that, except for the monster in Marine, there is no one of his age in the sea who is better than Katakuri. However, reality slapped them hard again. Oh boss, beat that guy up. The boss is mighty and has reached the top of the sea emperor. We will be the headlines tomorrow. Hey! Don't any of you remember? We are here to propose marriage. 
The red hair pirates cheered and shouted, waving their weapons and slashing at the stunned Charlotte family members next to them. Inside the central castle. Wu Nu and his daughter looked at Charlotte Lin Lin sitting on the table, a little dumbfounded. Is this, really Lin Lin? He couldn't believe it. The previous Lin Lin was a tyrant who was able to abandon his husband after Sister Lola was born. And now this big mom is eating sweets with a look of innocence on her face. Even though I had been mentally prepared before, the visual impact I received was too strong for a moment. Eh. How did you know my name is Lin Lin? After hearing Wu Nu's words, Lin Lin tilted his head and came closer. His originally huge face felt dwarfed by Wu Nu's. Of course I do, I am your husband, Lin Lin. Seeing that familiar face, Wu Nu subconsciously took a few steps back. Although his personality has changed drastically, the fear originating from his heart is difficult to eliminate in a short period of time. Husband. What is that? Is it delicious? Lin Lin tilted his head, secreting a lot of saliva, and his eyes were full of excitement. Husband, husband is not for food, but... Bump. The door of the castle was suddenly opened from the outside, and the violent collision indirectly helped Wu Nu to save the situation. Mom. The red hair pirates are attacking, Katakuri and I I can't hold on any longer. The visitor is the 28th son of the Charlotte family, Charlotte Cato, the young seed minister. At this time, his breathing was a little rapid, but he did not dare to stop at all. Kata, Curry. Lin Lin put down the cake in her hand, and her small brain quickly gathered information about this son, is he the person who is always nice to me? Kato was stunned and slapped his forehead hard, feeling a little regretful. I almost forgot, my mother is no longer the same mother. Forget it, let's treat a dead horse as a live doctor. He felt cruel and said loudly, yes, brother Katakuri is in danger. Mom, please rush over and help. It's him, I will never allow anyone to bully my friends. When Lin Lin heard this, he was very angry. He struck the air with his fist as big as a clay pot several times, causing bursts of air explosions. Although she didn't understand what a son was, she knew that the man named Katakuri was very kind to her, just like a nun. None. Lin Lin's eyes suddenly became confused. Yes, where did the nun go? Mom, let's go with you. The two sisters Chi Fong and Lola were also filled with indignation. Although they don't have a strong sense of belonging to the Big Mom pirates. But when Katakuri, who is highly respected by his brothers and sisters, encounters a crisis, they will not stand idly by. Katakuri rolled several times in the air, his legs plowing two deep marks on the ground. The fresh soil kept turning outwards, and a large amount of blood soaked it. He stood still for a moment, took a look at the small wounds on his body, and breathed a sigh of relief. Fortunately, the quality of the knife was not very good and it did not really hit him. But even so, a large number of fragments still penetrated into his body, and he felt a heartbreaking pain when he moved even slightly. Conqueror's Entanglement What an amazing spirit! Katakuri's eyes were a little serious. The playful and smiling pirate in front of him was undoubtedly on the same level as the Sea Emperor. Conqueror's Entanglement is the power that can reach the top. He had seen that kind of unparalleled courage in that marine. But Katakuri's tall body suddenly became limp and deformed, and except for his head, the area below his neck quickly turned into a white glutinous mass. Ding ding ding. With violent shaking, a large number of metal fragments fell to the ground, and the white glutinous mass returned to the shape of Katakuri. As a special paramecia, Katakuri's fruit is also capable of elementalization similar to Logia's. Hey! Roy, lend me your knife. Shanks casually handed the hilt of the knife to the pirate, and then shouted loudly at a tall pirate. Captain, don't think about it. My, Z-U-N, is a good sharp sword with fifty strokes. If I give you two blows, I won't be so distressed. 
Upon hearing this, Roy withdrew and retreated, his tone a little aggrieved. This knife was a trophy that he finally got. No matter how pretentious Shanks was, he probably wouldn't do much damage to it. However, as a swordsman, the sword is like a wife. You can't have your wife taken away, so come and take my wife. Roy complained secretly. Hey! You're so stingy. Shanks curled his lips and sneered with some disdain. Suddenly, a black shadow came through the sky. Snapped. Shanks quickly caught it, opened his palm, and took a closer look. It was a pure white long knife. The style was very ordinary, but even though the scabbard was revealed, he could still feel the sharpness in it. Good knife. When? Easily deflecting Perispero's attack in front of him, Bikaman slowly lit a cigarette for himself, I got this from that guy. Although it is probably just a good and sharp knife, it is enough for use. He pointed to the body of a short fat man on the ground. Charlotte Dosmarcher, the fourteenth son of the Charlotte family, minister of tea. The difference in strength was too great, and Beckman was almost killed with one move. Katakuri stared at Shanks, who was interacting with Beckman, with an ugly face. He wiped away the blush from the corner of his mouth, his eyes dark. After a brief confrontation, he already knew that Shanks' strength was not something he could shake. But. His cold eyes glanced around, basically all the pirates in the Charlotte family were being suppressed and beaten. If it weren't for the various weird fruit abilities, it would have been defeated in a short time. He is the greatest masterpiece of the Charlotte family, and there are many brothers and sisters behind him who need him to protect him. How could he be captured without any help? Taking a deep breath, he directly activated the fruit awakening ability. The ground under his feet, centered on him, instantly turned into a white and waxy territory. The ground kept rising and falling, as if he was stepping on some kind of giant mollusk. Oh ha ha. Has the fruit awakened? Shanks felt the turbulence coming from his feet, his legs seemed to have taken root and were motionless. It's really rare to see Paramecia's awakening ability. Swish. The black shadow shimmered, and giant rice cake sticks were instantly drawn out of the soft ground. The top was wrapped around armament hockey, and it was whipped towards Shanks. Chui Yu Nua Tuan. But before it touched the whole body, a cold light came out of the sheath instantly, and the giant rice cake strips were instantly cut into white blocks of uniform size. It's a pity that there is no fire, otherwise we could still have baked rice cakes. Shanks looked regretful and scratched the back of his head regretfully. Katakuri remained silent. He had never expected an attack of this magnitude to hurt the red-haired man. At the same time, he also understood the strength gap between the other party and himself, but he had the consciousness to risk his life. Whoosh! Katakuri's body shape changed rapidly, and afterimages passed through the air. The glutinous balls under his feet kept pushing him forward, and soon the trident was delivered to Shank's face. Really, why are you always staring at my face and hitting me? Shanks curled his lips, his tone slightly unhappy. But the movement of the hand did not stop at all. The blade sliced through the air, directly triggering bursts of screams. However, Katakuri breathed a sigh of relief in his heart. It seems. Conqueror's entanglement, he is not yet at the point where he can use it without any scruples. Everyone's hockey amount is limited, even Conqueror's hockey is the same. But. The next second, Katakuri's expression froze. The scarlet eyes seemed to see the distant future through the mists of time. The world in his eyes was instantly filled with black thunder, and the terrifying momentum enveloped him. The hairs all over his body suddenly stood on end, and he stood frozen on the spot, unable to move at all, like a feline with explosive hair. Boom! The attack came as promised. The air wave exploded, and there was a huge gap in Katakuri's chest that penetrated the entire body, and scarlet blood exploded. A smooth mirror slipped from his arms and turned into powder and spread out. Suddenly, a palm appeared on the ground, 
and then used it as a support point to quickly rush out. A long knife shone with a cold light and stabbed straight towards Shank's back. Since Katakuri's brother has failed, let him protect the family. Snag's arm swelled, almost pouring all his strength into them. Dafu, Cracker, Smoothie. Familiar faces flashed through his mind, and raging anger burst out in his chest. Mom's pirate group, not everyone can be bullied. Don't move, Snag. An extremely cold warning sound penetrated into his ears, and a fatal threat instantly enveloped him. His originally steaming anger was extinguished in an instant, as if someone had poured cold water on him from head to toe on a hot day. We'll die. He turned his head and neck stiffly. Beckman was seen with one hand covered in armor, easily blocking Perispero's attack, and the other hand holding a musket, with the black muzzle pointed at his heart. Ben Beckman. Although it looks like an inconspicuous firearm, its sense of threat is even more threatening than that of a famous sword. The strength of a weapon always depends on its user. You are not qualified to take action against our boss. After shaking Perispero away, Beckman stated calmly. Shanks didn't look back and grinned, what a reliable partner, Beckman. Leave them both to me and put an end to that guy. It's time for New World to remember the name Shanks. Beckman still said calmly. Don't be too arrogant. Bastard. Perispero was furious. A huge golden iron virgin made of candy appeared out of thin air and bounded towards Beckman. Candy virgin. Things like yours are useless to me. The fist covered in military color blasted out, and the huge force directly crushed the golden candy, and the sweet smell spread all over the sky. Snag on the other side was also waiting for an opportunity to act, although the threat Beckman brought to him was also very strong. But he knew now was not the time to back down. Katakuri staggered up from the ground, the bone-piercing pain constantly teasing the nerves in his brain, and he could even vaguely see the white bones and scarlet internal organs. The injury is a bit serious. Although Shirshensei had predicted the future, in such a short period of time, coupled with Conqueror's Kamui intimidation, he was unable to take any effective countermeasures. Although he is also the owner of Conqueror's Hockey, he can feel it. This guy is far more courageous than him. Just like that bastard in Marine, the bastard he dreamed of killing. It is indeed the crowning masterpiece of the Charlotte family. He can still move freely despite such a degree of injury. Shank's eyes suddenly lit up as he rushed towards him with a knife in hand. His purpose is not to kill the Charlotte family members, but to gain fame by pulling them down. Just pretending, you have to let others know that he has this strength. After all, his purpose is to maintain balance. Rather than fighting for hegemony at sea. If the Charlotte family members present were severely injured, the entire Big Mom pirates would be wiped out. Although Big Mom is the core of the pirate group, if she does not have enough power, she can only be called a big pirate, not the so-called emperor of the sea. Dong dong dong. Suddenly there was an undulating vibration on the ground, and a large blank appeared in the forest not far away, as if some large beast was crossing the border and charging rampantly. Ah, uh, I finally found it. In the air, a pure white piece of life paper was placed in the center of Atlas Palm. No matter how he turned the direction, the white paper always tilted towards the sea below. Whoosh! After determining the direction, hold the paper of life in the palm of your hand. His whole body seemed to have lost all support and was pulled by the strong gravity, falling rapidly towards the sea below. A strong feeling of weightlessness surged into my heart, and the sharp sound of air friction roared in my ears. Through the heavy clouds and fog, a blood-stained warship appeared in sight. Atlas quickly stopped, and a large flame suddenly ignited under his feet. After extinguishing the flame, he slowly stopped on the bow of the ship, his eyes rested on Marine who was the leader on the deck, and he grinned. Sakazuki Senpai, we finally successfully reunited. Akainu's eyes were filled with relief, and he nodded slowly, then I'll trouble you next. Snapped. 
snapping his fingers easily, Atlas smiled brightly, leave it to me to ensure that we can clean up the mess as quickly as possible. This is the battle plan they had discussed a long time ago. The two of them will rendezvous first, and then use the ability of Atlas to float the warship. This is much faster than normal navigation, and can also avoid being caught by the weird weather in New World. Interfere with the trip. As for how to merge. Of course, it was through the paper of life he had on his hand earlier, which was made from Akainu's nail polish. The last time they met, Akainu personally handed this to him. The paper of life is not immersed in water or fire, can only be torn apart, and is difficult to destroy. It is most suitable for use as navigation. However, generally this kind of thing will only be given to people who are more trustworthy, because through this life paper, one can locate one's position anytime and anywhere through another part. If someone with bad intentions takes it away, there will inevitably be some unnecessary trouble. Crash Dash The tide surged, and the warship underfoot rose into the sky, submerged in the clouds in an instant, and flew towards Tato land. Shank suddenly turned his head and looked at the place where the movement came from, his expression suddenly serious. In his perception, a violent aura kept approaching him. Soon, the dense woods were pushed aside by a big hand. A woman wearing a pink suspender belt was revealed, her fat face full of anger, who told you to bully Katakuri? You are not allowed to fight. As he spoke, the huge soles of his feet moved again, and armament hockey instinctively emerged from his palms, grabbing Shanks. When? Naturally, Shanks would not surrender, so he raised his knife and held it above his head. This is, big M.O.M. Shanks took advantage of the stalemate and couldn't help but look at the oldest sea emperor. The power was so great that even a casual blow would make his tiger's mouth tremble. But this group of idiots looks nothing like the tyrant in the rumors, right? Um. Lin Lin finally realized that the little man underneath was unusual, and he immediately poked his head over curiously, and asked in a consultative tone. Are you different from the little bear I met before? Can you please stop bullying Katakuri? He is my good friend. Shank's eyes widened instantly and he cast doubtful gaze on Katakuri not far away. Are you serious? Is this guy really the Emperor of the Sea, Big M.O.M.? Hey! Did you hear me? You are so rude. The nun said. Nun, nun. Seeing that Shanks didn't seem to react at all, Lin Lin was a little angry, and then fell into uncontrollable murmuring. Sister, sister, where are you? Lin Lin misses you so much. Woo woo. None. Lin Lin shouted to the sky, the sound waves rolled, and the terrifying momentum burst out. Her eyes suddenly turned red, and her face became ferocious at a speed visible to the naked eye. Caught off guard, Shanks was thrown away, with a look of confusion on his face. Is this guy here to play a face-changing game with him? Not good. But Katakuri's expression changed drastically. Her mother Cyphoria has returned. Although he didn't know why his mother suddenly seemed to be a different person, according to his observation, his mother's thinking disorder did not disappear. Mom! Wake up! Katakuri jumped directly in front of Lin Lin and shouted sternly. It seems that he wants to see how his words can awaken the other person's sanity. Sister, sister, where are you? Lin Lin misses you so much. Obviously, Katakuri's actions had no effect, and Lin Lin continued to walk forward rampantly. Hateful. Katakuri cursed angrily and immediately stepped aside. Although Lin Lin has lost the power of the soul soul fruit at this time, he still has the strength and body of a monster. In his current state, if a collision occurs, he may be permanently disabled. On the other side, the noise caused by Lin Lin finally made it difficult for the people on the island to ignore, and they all stopped their fighting movements unconsciously. The red hair pirates mainly watched the show, while the pirates of the Big Mom pirates looked worried. How seemingly endless rain. The mother who got sick doesn't even recognize her relatives. Boss. 
what's going on? Yasup and others also quickly gathered around Shanks, and everyone became curious. All they saw was that their boss flew out first, and then Big Mom fell into a violent state. Could it be that the captain did something unspeakable to that old woman? All the pirates looked at Shanks suspiciously. Shanks felt a little scared when he was stared at by these guys, and couldn't help but trembled, you guys, don't think too much, you know why this old woman suddenly went crazy. It's probably Surya. Beckman suddenly said, I have long heard that Big Mom suffers from a mental illness called Sirika. No. Shanks pondered for a moment before saying, there was something wrong with her state before she became ill. She felt like a mentally retarded child. It's definitely not just Surya. Beckman looked at the serious Shanks with some surprise, when did you learn to use your brain? Ha ha ha. I'm not, ah. Uh. No, what do you mean? Beckman. While Charlotte was distressed and the red haired pirates were laughing and playing around. The shadow of the warship quietly fell over Coco Island. Two cold gazes from the bow of the ship were cast on the pirates on the island, sending chills all over the body. Why is this situation, different from what I expected? Jumping from the warship, the two people slowly fell down. Behind him, the white cloak of justice rustled in the strong wind. That, is Marine. Hey, hey. I'm not dreaming, am I? How could Marine react so quickly? Asshole. It's that guy by Jian, he has the ability to fly. The pirates of the Charlotte family were frightened and angry, and followed the sound and looked towards the sky. Huh. It seems a little different from what I imagined. Atlas looked at the two distinct groups of pirates below. Although they were a little embarrassed, it was basically nothing serious. Just a few unlucky ones, lying motionless on the ground, losing their breath of life. Are these guys, playing a game of pirate house? Although it's a little unexpected, now that you're here, you must leave something behind. Akainu quickly judged the situation on the field, and then focused his attention on the rampaging Lin Lin. Is this what's called Cyphoria? As Marine's top combat power, he naturally knows some information about Big M.O.M. This kind of madness that completely loses one's own will may be the flaw of Charlotte Lean Lean's monster talent. Yes, but I can't tell what she lost during the last battle, except for her ability. Akainu's heart moved and he said, How do you know that she is no longer an esper? Could it be that you have? Ha ha ha, I also made a guess. Atlas laughed and fooled around. It's really hard to explain the current situation on him. The spell itself is something beyond the knowledge of the pirate world. Seeing this, Akainu stopped and did not go any further. When it was weak before, the world government didn't care about Atlas' secrets. Now that they are stronger, even if they take it seriously, there is nothing they can do. The main reason is that Atlas's growth rate is fast enough, and the previous talisman manifestations were relatively subtle. That is to say, starting from the dragon talisman, there are relatively cool special effects. How to divide it? Leave big MOM to you. Or should we watch each one to death? Atlas asked with a smile while rubbing his chin. A kind of thought for a moment and said coldly, destroy the big mom pirates first. The reason is very simple. If two people act separately, they will end up in vain, and both sides will be unhappy. Judging from the situation on the court, it is obvious that the red hair pirate's strength is relatively intact and is a difficult nut to crack. Now that we've decided, let's, make a quick decision. Whoosh! As soon as he finished speaking, Atlas released the control of the chicken talisman on their bodies and quickly fell towards the island below. Boss, let's withdraw first. Marine's target seems to be only big MOM. Yes, as long as word of this battle spreads, boss, you will definitely be the emperor of the sea. The people of the red hair pirates were not stupid either. When they saw Atlas and the two heading straight towards the big mom pirates, they immediately retreated. Beckman, who was standing next to Shanks, remained silent 
quietly watching the captain's increasingly serious face. He was waiting for Shanks to make a decision. Shanks' brows slowly relaxed and he directly issued an order, prepare to stop Marine. We can't let them destroy the Big Mom pirates. Why? Captain. We should retreat at this time. Why should we help the Big Mom pirates? The other crew members shouted at Chu Dao. This is the captain's order. Beckman's tone was low, and his dangerous eyes glanced at the pirate who had just spoken out against him. Beckman. Shank stopped him, grinning to both sides, because, we are pirates. The faces of the pirates froze, and then they laughed a little wildly, yes. We are pirates, why should we be afraid of their marines? On the other side, two strong bodies collided directly with Coco Island, causing the earth to shake and the ground to crack. Swish. Before the weight was released from his feet, Atlas ejected directly and was in front of Lin Lin in an instant. Look at each other level. Sister, where are you? Lin Lin misses you so much, Wu Wu. Lin Lin didn't realize it and destroyed everything in front of him, venting his most primitive desire for destruction. Bang! Atlas would not spoil him. Armed colors covered his feet, and his normal-sized legs and feet instantly swelled. It's a bit like the legendary, heavenly canned foot. The kick shot out directly, carrying a terrifying wind pressure, which was instantly stamped on Lin Lin's violent face. It was like a golden mountain falling over a jade pillar, under a sudden heavy blow. Lin Lin's entire body flew backwards, and all the flowers, plants and trees along the way were destroyed. Mother! Katakuri was shocked, but he had no time to think about it the next second. A rolling heat wave hit his face, and a dog's head, whose entire body was made of lava, bit him. The magma continued to drip along the way, exposing the most primitive surface of Coco Island. Dog bites red lotus. Cough. Katakuri coughed lightly and felt the warmth coming from his chest. He took a strong breath and felt glutinous balls surging under his feet. When? At this moment, a figure stepped in, the cold light cut through the space, and the black blade was firmly pressed between the interlaced canine teeth. If you want to fight, I can accompany you. Shank said this as his long hair was blown by the heat wave. Katakuri looked at the not-so-tall man standing in front of him, a little distracted, why do you want to help me? It was obviously hostile one second, but it helped him block the fatal blow the next second. What on earth does this man want to do? Swish. Shanks didn't mean to answer Katakuri's doubts. He exerted a slight force on his hand, and the weapon color instantly flowed, continuously drilling into the inside of the lava dog's head. Boom. Just like thunder from the sky stirring up fire on the ground, the instantaneous reaction formed a huge reactor, which then exploded. Armed color internal destruction. Red-haired Shanks. Akainu followed behind, hound bite Guren, and rushed over with a long stride, his face extremely gloomy. If it hadn't been for this guy, the blow just now would have been enough to kill Katakuri on the spot. As for the argument that victory cannot be achieved without force. Akainu doesn't care at all, as long as the goal of killing the pirates is achieved. Neither the means nor the process are very important. Boom. A dull crash echoed, and a shadow suddenly appeared behind Shanks. Hey! Be careful behind you! Katakuri's urgent reminder sounded, and Shanks seemed to have expected it and pulled away the long sword in his hand to block it. Late! A cold voice echoed in his ears, and a huge fist punched out. Air waves and sonic booms constantly hit the eardrums, and the stinging sensation came like a tide. Boom! Peran unleashed his force, and the blade covered with weaponry color suddenly bent, as if it was like a big bow stretched to its limit. Boom! After only a moment of stalemate, the terrifying power directly shattered the blade. The metal fragments in the sky turned into life-threatening ghosts and pierced towards the body along the wind and waves. Ding ding! 
The sound of gold and iron mingling sounded, and the armed color covered the whole body for a moment, but then dissipated like a tide in the next second. Bang! Breaking through the long sword's block, Atlas' domineering fist came as expected, hitting his face like a bull charging. In an instant, several white molars stained with bloodline rose into the sky. Shanks himself flew backwards instantly under the impact, and even his brain went blank for a moment. Dark Hound The molten lava rolled, and the scorching giant fist blasted towards Shanks, enough to burn him to pieces in an instant as he was helpless to fight back. However, the black thunder began to draw threads, and the terrifying momentum instantly increased, and layers of air waves swept across, washing away the surroundings. Shank's body turned suddenly and punched out. Before the giant fist of lava could be touched, a terrifying power exploded in the middle, completely shattering the giant fist. After beating Shanks away, Atlas stared dangerously at Katakuri, who was still alive. Now you. He smiled solemnly and stepped on the ground dozens of times. The flames of the explosion rose and the space gradually distorted. The air rippled like water, and Atlas appeared silently in front of Katakuri. The whole process seemed to have never occurred within this time and space, and a large space in the middle seemed to have been cut off abruptly. The whole person appeared here so inconsistently, and Katakuri's expression, demeanor, and movement seemed to be frozen at this moment. Click. Fine cracks suddenly appeared, and then appeared one after another like dominoes. From the face to the soles of the feet, a large number of spider web like cracks appeared. Call. The long river of time resumed its movement, and the green light on Atlas' body flashed away, and it returned to its previous appearance. When Katakuri's demeanor returned to normal, but when he saw the iron tower like figure in front of him, his pupils instantly shrank to the size of a needle tip. Snapped. Huge footprints covered Katakuri's head. The clear lines on the soles of his feet were getting bigger and bigger in his eyes, but Katakuri couldn't move, as if he had fallen into an ice cellar, his whole body was so stiff that he couldn't move. Like a watermelon exploding, red and white brains splashed out, and a tall headless corpse collapsed, creating a large human-shaped crater on the ground. Katakuri and I I dash. Hey, hey. Am I dreaming? Katakuri. Shock, disbelief, fear. Various complex expressions appeared on the faces of the Charlotte family pirates in turn, and confusion gradually crawled out of their hearts uncontrollably, and finally crawled into their minds. TSK. Atlas shook his head slowly, seeming to feel sorry for his former rival, and also seemed to feel relieved to have cut off another wing of the big mom pirates. In fact, the scene just now seemed simple. In fact, he almost used several spells to the ultimate level based on his original physique. Although the rabbit spell has power beyond the speed of light, it is a conceptual speed force. But the energy required in that moment could drain Atlas dry. Not only physical strength, but also flesh, blood, marrow, and all the energy that the body can use. Just a moment of experiment almost caused him to fall apart. Even if he used the horse charm to repair it, it still consumed a third of his physical strength. You know, this is not even traveling through time and space. It is estimated that if you want to take the rabbit spell to its limit, you can only use the power of science, such as space-time particles. Or maybe an immortal god like the Holy Lord doesn't need to worry about energy at all. Katakuli Roaring into the sky, conquerors trembled in the sky, the sky suddenly changed, and a huge black shadow rushed in at a high speed, destroying all vegetation along the way. Atlas' eyes narrowed slightly, murderous intent overflowing from the corners of his narrow eyes, and he locked eyes on Lin Lin who was flying towards him. At this time, Charlotte Lin Lin's eyes were red, her sanity was somewhere between awake and unconscious, and her whole body was filled with a world-destroying violence. It's so scary. Atlas pouted and mocked in Kizaru's tone. Charlotte Lin Lin, who was already in a state of madness, suddenly went berserk, her arms wrapped with weapons, 
and a mountain-like body rolled towards her. When? Atlas also punched back, an explosion sounded from the center of the collision, and a circular wave of air spread out, sweeping around. Old woman. It seems that Kick just now helped you regain some sense. He stared with both eyes and saw a little clarity in this guy's red eyes. But it doesn't matter, he alone is enough to deal with Charlotte Lin Lin in this state. Boom! The fire flickered, and explosive power was directed towards Lin Lin's fat body. Like a Sakumani throwing an elephant, Lin Lin's body was blown away with great ease. If there was a ceiling to the strength of the pirate world, he estimated. Kaido of the Beasts, Charlotte Lin Lin and others are just touching the ceiling, while Rox is above the ceiling. The current Atlas is equivalent to the original Rox state, or in other words, stronger. Almost half of the foot reached the ceiling. As for him, it is very likely that he is a strong man above the ceiling, although it is most likely with the help of the so-called Celestial Dragon's national treasure. However, the ceiling is above the ceiling, and the combat power is not at the same level as theirs. Boom! Riding Lin Lin to fly backwards, Atlas's figure instantly surged, and his whole body stood up like an iron tower. Armed colored patterns were outlined, and his feet continuously triggered air explosions in the air, and he quickly approached Charlotte Lin Lin. When? Another collision, Lin Lin's arm was thrown away, and the originally adjusted center of gravity shifted again. Bang! Atlas took advantage of the situation, flipped over suddenly, and hit Lin Lin hard with a back elbow. The armed colors go hand in hand with conquerors, frantically tearing apart the steel balloon's defense. Ah! The shrill voice echoed through the sky, and Lin Lin's face instantly turned ferocious, with veins popping out all over his body, like an evil ghost crawling out of hell. Asshole! It hurt so much. Holding back the pain, Lin Lin clenched his fist suddenly and punched Atlas' temple. When? Like morning bells and evening drums, the violent impact directly flattened his head. Even with the protection of the armed color, the huge strength and the powerful hockey, Atlas still suffered a lot of damage. However, Atlas's figure did not shake at all, but his smile was distorted under the heavy blow. Old woman, today is the day you die. Boom! The fire exploded, and the entire arm was like a big gun. The color of the weapon flowed rapidly, Conqueror's hockey lingered all the time, and the black thunder disillusioned. The gun comes out like a dragon. An entire fist sank directly into Charlotte Lin Lin's abdomen. The entire palm turned into white bones in an instant, and then regained flesh and blood in an instant. Puff. A large mouthful of blood spurted out. Atlas frowned and pulled away without a drop of blood. Feeling the numbness coming from his fist, he couldn't help but sigh secretly. The defense of the steel balloon is indeed terrifying. Even with the dragon talisman blasting to open the way, if you want to forcefully break through, you still have to pay a certain price. But. Atlas raised his eyes to look at Lin Lin who was stumbling, and once again covered the Buddha Yuhuan with his palms on his waist. Let him, use this supreme sharp knife to end all of this. Although Charlotte Lin Lin without the soul soul fruit can maximize the physical talents of Steel Balloon, that is only in the long run. Now Lin Lin has suddenly lost his fruit ability, and his combat effectiveness has almost dropped off a cliff. Moreover, his current IQ, is even more appalling. The Other Side Seeing a Kainu advancing soaring like a divinely assisted Atlas, his whole body suddenly felt as if he was in a state of ecstasy. His arms, which had completely turned into lava, punched out one after another, locking Shank's figure tightly, almost completely giving up on defense. It's like a life-threatening style of play. Boom! A pitch-black bullet shot out of the darkness and instantly penetrated Akainu's body. Crimson magma dripped onto the surface, emitting thick white smoke. Armed color. Akainu's face was so gloomy that it looked like it could drip water. Fortunately, he had been paying attention to Beckman's movements, even if the bullet was not wrapped in the weapon's color. 
This guy is very sinister. He has been flying kites nearby, and from time to time the ordinary bullets are mixed with a few bullets wrapped in armed colors. Boss. It's time to retreat, there's no point. After stopping Akainu's offensive with one shot, Beckman turned to Shanks and asked for advice, there is no point in continuing to fight now. Shanks' eyes focused, and the weapon color on the long sword became more and more intense, and conquerors began to wrap around it. The air buzzed, sand and rocks flew, the wind and clouds suddenly changed, and the atmosphere gradually became stagnant. He pointed his long knife at Akainu, turned to the eager crew behind him and smiled. Get rid of him first. Marine can't do it without paying the price. Although Akainu has the highest combat power in the naval headquarters, he is really not enough in front of their entire pirate group. Boss. I've been waiting for your words. Ha ha ha. Lousy has disliked this guy for a long time. Who can he show with his stinky face? Yes, isn't he Admiral? Our boss is also the Emperor of the Sea. The members of the Red Hair Pirates waved their weapons and looked extremely excited. Defeating the big MOM pirates and capturing a Marine Admiral. If word of this spreads out, their reputation as Red Hair Pirates will resound across the entire sea, completely confirming their title as the Emperor of the Sea. Rumble. Just when the pirates of the Red Hair Pirates were lustful, Coco Island suddenly began to violently move, as if an ancient giant began to wake up and open its terrifying fangs to the world. Want to use more to defeat less? What a coincidence, that's what I thought too. Like rolling thunder, Atlas's voice echoed in the ears of the pirates, causing their expressions to change immediately. The next moment, an Uzumaki suddenly began to appear on the ground, and the soil continued to roll, making a twisting sound like a metal collision. Hey hey hey. What the hell is this? Ah. Legs. Legs. Lousy's legs. It hurts so much. Hey. Someone please help Lousy, I seem to be stuck. Boss, come and save me quickly. The inexplicable suction force quickly pulled the pirates in, and blood foam flew everywhere, just like a human slaughterhouse. Shanks and Beckman looked at each other, and then loudly issued an order, belonging to the Red Hair Pirates, retreat first. That guy by Jian's abilities are too strange. While maintaining his abilities, he can actually engage in such a high-intensity battle. In other words, this thing under your feet actually has its own consciousness. There is absolutely no need for Bai Jian himself to control it. Thinking of this, Shanks couldn't help but shudder. He remembered that Big Mom's abilities seem to be somewhat similar. However, it seems that he has not seen Big Mom display its fruit ability yet. Want to leave? Akainu snorted coldly and quickly simulated a volcanic eruption. Powerful power burst out from his feet, and a giant fist like lava spurted out, turning into a meteor volcano and shrouding the retreating red hair pirates. I told you, you can't stop us. Beckman replied lazily, raised his musket and fired into the air. Yasup and Lucky Lou stood up one after another. Bullets, hockey, and various moves were sent flying upwards desperately. At the same time, I watched the movement under my feet closely to avoid accidentally stepping into any Uzumaki. While fighting and retreating, the Red Hair Pirates quickly evacuated Coco Island and boarded the Red Force. Hateful. Akaina chased to the shore and saw red hair pirates slowly sailing away from the coastline, and couldn't help but cursed. Immediately activating the fruit ability, the overwhelming magma fist leaped out, trying to intercept the progress of the pirate ship. Ha ha ha. No need to send it away, we will leave on our own. The pirates leaning against the side of the ship looked arrogant and shouted. It has reached this point, even Akainu can't stop them, Akiji is enough. Seeing that the attempt to stop him failed, Akainu immediately turned his attention to other pirates on the island. The anger in his heart suddenly turned into sparks all over the sky, bombing towards the pirates of the Charlotte family. Asshole, fight this guy. 
Perispero looked around at the remaining brothers and sisters, and he couldn't help but feel a sense of sadness in his heart, Apella. Conti. While greeting, the candy man in his hand continued to transform, resisting the dense meteor volcano. He is Paramecia, a person with the ability to lick fruits, who takes the form of candy. When he encounters a person with high temperature abilities like Akainu, he is directly restrained to death. Not to mention that his own hard power is far inferior to Akainu. Although I don't know what happened to you, but... Hockey lingered on Atlas Island, the sky suddenly darkened, and the blade pointed at Lin Lin below, I will take your life away again. Whoosh! The body leaped forward out of thin air, and the blade made tiny cracks in the air. At the same time, two thick arms appeared on the ground and grabbed Lin Lin's ankles. Behead all enemies without stopping, behead them without stopping. As the murmur sounded, time and space froze at this moment, and the whole world seemed to be slowed down countless times. Suddenly, a sharp edge cut through the sky, piercing forward with a cold light. The secret of one sword style overlord blood skyline. Laugh. Scarlet was falling, Atlas and Charlotte Lin Lin passed each other, and the blade was slowly sheathed. Well. Lin Lin raised his head, staring blankly at the sky with white eyes. The palms under his feet turned into gravels and scattered around due to the struggle just now. Boom. The huge body collapsed suddenly, the upper body and lower body were slightly misaligned, and the huge gap almost split the whole person in two. The white broken bones and internal organs with residual warmth were completely exposed to the air. Ah. You're not dead yet. What a tenacious vitality. Seeing and feeling that this guy still had a strong breath of life, Atlas couldn't help but be a little surprised. He is truly worthy of being the most physically gifted pirate on the sea. Even with such a fatal wound, he is still able to survive. After thinking about it for a while, Atlas did not step forward to finish the attack. It must be a very interesting thing to gather all the pirate emperors by then and broadcast them live to the world on Marineford's execution platform, right? Rubbing his chin, Atlas was ready to move. There are many thoughts of killing Wanakuni and using Kaido's head. The earth and rocks rolled, and large pieces of earth covered Lin Lin's body, wrapping him tightly. Etc. He suddenly stopped him, and the Buddha Yuhun around his waist was unsheathed again, cold light flashed, and black thunder instantly lingered up. Swish. Thick limbs rose into the sky, and Lin Lin, who had fainted, suddenly frowned, but soon fell silent again. Hiss, it seems a little easier to cut than when you are awake. Atlas held a sword in the air and flew towards the pirate not far away with several vacuum slashes. Over there, Akainu's battle is almost over. The only people in the Big Mom pirates who can be called the ones carrying the cauldron are Big Mom himself and Katakuri. Although Perispero himself is Charlotte's eldest son, he is not even as powerful as a general. Even if he cooperates with a few crooked melons and cracked jujubes, he can't make a few moves under Akainu's hands. Did those guys from the Red Hair Pirates escape? As he walked slowly, lava surged along the way, and a large number of burned corpses were scattered. His wide-open eyes were full of unwillingness. A large lump of soil was squirming behind him, following Atlas step by step. Well, their overall strength is too balanced, and Marine can't resist it. Akina glanced at Marine's corpse on the battlefield with dark eyes, and said slowly, the pension standards for these soldiers will be based on your last time. He didn't bring these soldiers here just to watch a show. Fighting with real swords and guns is the justice of a marine. However, war inevitably involves sacrifices. He is not afraid of sacrifice, but he will not ignore it either. Won't you deal with this guy? Akaina stared at the clod of soil wrapped behind Atlas and asked in a deep voice. Don't worry, in the future, if all these so-called emperors of the sea are captured and executed together, it will definitely be a very spectacular scene. Atlas grinned, murderous. A week later. The change of old and new emperors, marine surprise attack. 
Thanks to the strong publicity of Morgan's, it made the front page of the newspaper and was transported by Newsbird to be sold all over the world. Red Hair Pirates became famous. Although the original Red Hair Pirates were also super newcomers, the supernovas on the sea every year are like the Christian carp crossing the river, countless. The Red Hair Pirates, who have long since left for the New World, have long since disappeared from sight on the sea, and have been developing quietly in the New World. And now, a big revelation comes directly. Entering Tato land alone and escaping from the siege of two admirals, these are enough to prove that the Red Hair Pirates are powerful enough to sit on the throne of the Sea Emperor. And Marine's actions put countless pirates on alert. Although there were rumors of Big Mom's death last time, this time it was confirmed by Marine herself. The Big Mom pirates were completely wiped out, Big Mom himself was imprisoned in Impel Down, and Marine is planning to have a live execution broadcast around the world. At this time. New World, an unknown island. The Red Hair Pirates, who had just ascended to the throne of the Sea Emperor, were resting here. The venomous sunlight shone through the emerald green banana leaves and fell on the pirates. Thick shadows covered most of their faces, and everyone was silently maintaining the weapons in their hands. The atmosphere seemed particularly depressing. Boom! There was a soft sound of footsteps, and the pirates instantly became alert. They quickly held their weapons in their hands and stared at the source of the sound. You are finally back. This is a man with sharp eyes like a falcon, carrying a long cross-shaped knife on his back, and holding a brand new newspaper in his hand. Ah, it's you. It's a pity that I can't duel with you today. Shanks relaxed after seeing the appearance of the visitor and smiled. You were lucky enough to escape from that man's hands. My hawk looked Shanks up and down and raised the newspaper in his hand towards him, the newspaper has listed you as the new sea emperor. Thanks to Big Mom for involving him, otherwise we wouldn't have retreated so intact. Shanks agrees. There was indeed a certain amount of luck this time, after all, he was a man who could dominate an era. The last one was a pirate, and this time, it's a marine. Maybe this is the so-called balance. Feeling a little sigh in his heart, he opened his mouth wide and held down the straw hat that was about to be blown away by the wind. Shanks invited my hawk, since we don't plan on dueling, let's have a banquet to celebrate. See Circle Calendar 1516. The two emperors stand side by side, Marine is powerful, and countless pirates are trying to survive in the cracks. The age of great pirates has fallen into an unprecedented decline. Same year. Crazy Hunter, Harry stands out among the supernovas with his absolute strength. The world government launched a Shichibukai invitation at an extremely fast speed, attracting the attention of all the Paradise Pirates. Shichibukai. Being able to receive this invitation as a supernova is undoubtedly a huge recognition of his strength. Paradise, an island somewhere. A pirate ship docked at the shore, the gangway lowered, and a group of pirates filed out carelessly. The leader is a strong man who looks like an iron tower. Anaconda's muscles are covered with crisscross scars. Years of life at sea have left his face somewhat weathered, and his sharp eyes seem to pierce the heart. While walking, the man found a place to sit down. The crew members behind him also took their seats and began to look at the surrounding environment. This is a deserted island, truly deserted. The only tree large enough to enjoy the shade is just above their captain's head. Vice Captain Barton subconsciously looked in the direction of the captain. An orange-red spherical fruit with a spiral pattern came into view, like a gathering of small flames. Devil. Devil fruit. Captain Harry Dash. Barton exclaimed in disbelief, pointing with trembling fingers at the secret treasure of the sea hanging on the tree. Harry's eyes narrowed and he followed Barton's gaze. The power of devil fruit. He clenched his fist, and suddenly a crisp crackling sound echoed. He still remembered what the man once told him. Only hockey is the power above all else. However, Harry felt the explosive power coming from his body. His hockey, 
hadn't grown in a long time. Not only the physical shackles, but also the training in actual combat are too lacking. New World Harry's eyes were far away, as if he was recalling that not-so-good afternoon. When he returned from fishing, he saw that the island was devastated, and the happy villagers suddenly disappeared. There is no doubt that these are the achievements left by the pirates. Following the only clues, everything pointed to the nearby marine base. These marines colluded with a group of pirates who escaped from the New World. They deceived the superiors and the inferiors, robbed merchant ships, and oppressed the islanders. It was not uncommon. So, in a fit of rage, Harry slaughtered the entire marine branch. Therefore, he was also wanted by the world government, and the initial bounty was as high as 70 million. In parks where there is generally no hockey heritage, Harry, who has 70 million in his debut, is undoubtedly a great pirate-level existence. In Mingden Paradise, he quickly gathered a large group of friends and began to hunt pirates and marines crazily. The bounty will skyrocket almost every few months. However, the grind of paradise has its limits after all. His strength quickly stagnated, and both Haki and his body reached a bottleneck. New World, or Shichibukai. Harry murmured softly, seeming a little confused. Boss, why don't you summon Shichibukai first? This does not conflict with entering the New World. Barton was making suggestions from the side. World Government. Harry's eyes suddenly gleamed, and strong hatred overflowed, and Marine. He stood up suddenly, plucked the devil fruit from the tree, and swallowed it. Marine Ford, Conference Room. For projector phone bugs are neatly placed on the table, and the drunken light is projected on the white curtain. Next to them are several anti-eavesdropping phone bugs. At the end of the conference table is the Marshal of the Naval Headquarters Buddha Sengoku. Atlas Kid, what are you going to do with that guy from Big Mom? Sengoku looked at the man in the center of the curtain and asked with a frown. Sakazuki plus Atlas, two guys with cruel methods, actually captured Big Mom alive, which really made him confused. How about we just launch a general attack on Wanakuni? Just in time to take down, hundred beasts, Kaido as well. Atlas did not directly answer Sengoku's question, but instead came up with Kaido's idea. It just so happened that when he got the Budo Yuhuan, he accepted Wanakuni's love. This time he took the opportunity to save Wanakuni from the fire and water. As for letting that little kid Mamanosuk be Wanakuni's general. Don't even think about it. Whether that guy will be alive by then is unknown. Doing nothing, just relying on a so-called prophecy, waiting for the coming of the Savior as a matter of course, and finally sitting on the throne of the general, enjoying the cheers and support of the so-called people. This kind of thing is really a bit ridiculous. Kaido. Sengoku stared at Atlas solemnly, are you serious? Launching a general attack on the pirates now? In Sengoku's view, Marine's actions now are equivalent to sending a signal to the pirates. Marine is about to start a comprehensive cleanup. Atlas sneered and leaned back a little, pirates are inferior goods after all. They are like a plate of loose sand that can be easily kneaded. Let's launch a general attack. These pirates are always emerging in endlessly. Big Mom falls, and the red hair rises to the top again. There may be three emperors, four emperors, and five emperors in the future. It's better to end it once and for all. This bad era started by Roger should have been ended long ago. What a bullshit era of pirates. The next one should be called the era of big marines. Hearing Atlas's declaration, several projections nearby looked sideways. Akainu was the first to speak out in support, yes, pirates, shouldn't exist. But, will this cause the pirates to become excited and even unite? And the world government. Akiji hesitated. It's not that he's opposed to this approach, but he thinks it should be done step by step and boil the frog in warm water. Kizaru said, Kawainiai, but there was a hint of seriousness in his eyes, I didn't expect you to have such ambitions, Atlas-san it's really scary. 
In fact, everyone present knew what was going on. When there are conflicts externally, Marine's sharp knife will naturally be pointed at the external enemy. After the external conflicts are resolved, the internal conflicts between Marine and world government are bound to erupt vigorously. Sengoku slowly scanned everyone's reactions, the corners of his mouth twitched, and finally his eyes were fixed on Atlas's face. Otherwise, will you be the marshal? Now that he has finished speaking to you, what should he say later? Bro bro. Just then, a buzzing sound came from Sengoku's pocket. Sengoku's face suddenly became serious, and he glanced at the phone bug on the table without any trace, and then he picked up the phone slowly. Moshi Moshi this is Sengoku, any instructions? Five elders. Hearing this, the others kept silent and listened curiously to see what the five old men were up to. Mariehua, Pangea. The five old men were staring attentively at the telephone bug on St. Nazarov's hand. They know very well that this may be the most intense collision with the world government since the establishment of Marine. This was a solution that the five of them discussed and finally reached an agreement on. The marshal is re-elected. It's me. St. Nazarov spoke slowly, with a strange edge looming in the corner of his eyes, Sengoku, under your leadership. Marine has repeatedly disobeyed the world government's orders, so. We all agree that you need to rethink whether you are competent as a marshal. So, what are the instructions from His Excellency St. Nazarov? It's very simple. Sabaeti Archipelago. Huge Argentine mangroves are exposed above the water, and countless colorful bubbles float up to the sky above the islands. Then it broke, and the sun shone on it, and rainbows loomed, forming this existence that was like a fairyland on earth. The entire Sabaeti archipelago is generally relatively harmonious, especially since the alternate admiral, Fujitora, became the island's base commander with a smile. However, compared with Atlas's thunderous methods, a smile seems much gentler. Therefore, the battle lines to rectify various crime problems in the Sabaeti archipelago are relatively long. However, a smile is still a smile after all. That kind of super-wide range of knowledge and color combined with the fruit's ability is almost unsolvable on the entire island. As a result, basically very few pirates can pass through the new world from here. The heart has the tigers, fine sniffing the rose. A ferocious beast is still a ferocious beast after all, and it is impossible to think that it is just an appearance just because it appears harmless to humans and animals. However, in the delicious soup, sometimes a few mouse droppings will appear at an inappropriate time. As the nobles of the world, celestial dragons are like patrolling their own back garden, arrogant and crowded. Bodyguards in black suits lined up on the left and right sides, raising their chins and heads, and their eyes under sunglasses vigilantly inspected the people kneeling around them. Beware of someone suddenly jumping out and frightening their master. It has been several years since Fisher Tiger was arrested, and the Celestial Dragons, who have been itching for a long time, have come down to play two autumn games from time to time. However, with the rectification of Ishiao, the number of human trafficking venues in Sabaeti Archipelago has tended to decrease. There are even a few scattered ones, but they are still managed by the Celestial Dragons butler, so they can survive. Are there any novel slaves at the auction today? In the center, with a tall slave sitting under his buttocks, St. Kalmak, wearing a transparent glass mask, asked expectantly. Hearing this, CP0 on the side responded hurriedly, recently. Marine has been paying closer attention recently, and there are no new items in the auction house. Although there was no way to blatantly destroy the exchange, Ishiao imitated the method of Atlas and started directly from the source, making it impossible for the slaves to reach Sabaeti. Harm always comes from buying and selling, from profit. If the slave trade is banned in Sabaeti, then other places will still rise, and Marine will not have the time, energy, or even the military force to govern the entire sea. However, at least it can exert some restraint on the world's largest slave owners, the Celestial Dragons. Generally speaking, it takes more than just a wave of hands for Celestial Dragons to go to sea. 
not only considering the appearance issue, but also the safety issue of celestial dragons, five elders will strictly control the frequency of celestial dragons' travel. Therefore, the restless celestial dragons like Charmico can only go to Sabaeity for a leisurely stroll. After all, he had only been to East Blue a few years ago. Marine. That Marine named Fujitora again. Saint Kalmak was inexplicably agitated. He waved the whip in his hand and whipped the slave who was crawling under his butt until the skin was torn and blood foam flew everywhere. These bastards marine are just our lackeys and they dare to bully me. As he spoke, his expression became more and more angry, and the whip in his hand twitched more frequently. Stop! With a scream, a woman ran out of the crowd in a panic, her expression suppressing fear. Casino. He walked out of the door with a smile and a satisfied look on his face. The warm sunshine fell on his face, and there were many shadows in the ravines. I seem to be lucky today. I just killed everyone in the casino and made a lot of money. At least I can add a poached egg to my bowl of ramen later. Thinking of this, his steps became more relaxed. Walking straight forward, the scene in the center of a naked field made him frown. Celestial dragons are the only creatures in his impression that have such a malicious aura. But thinking about Sengoku's warning to him before taking up the post of base commander, he still chose to take a detour. Anyway, he has become accustomed to it during this period of time. After all, he is looking forward to the future marine that Mr. Atlas talks about. However, a scream made him stop. Stop! Although he couldn't see, the burning fire of anger was as bright as the sun in what he saw and heard. Untouchable. Charma Kishin was stunned for a moment, then laughed ferociously, threw down the long whip in his hand, and pulled out the golden musket from his waist. He aimed at the girl who rushed out without mercy and pulled the trigger. Dark bullets burst out from the barrel and went straight towards the door. Buzz! The purple-black torrent poured out, and the originally menacing bullets suddenly became sluggish. After staying in the air for a moment, it fell straight down. This, who is so desperate to stop celestial dragon's bullets? This woman doesn't want her life, and she dares to rush into master celestial dragons. What do you know? Didn't you see that the slave who was beaten just now was the girl's fiancé? He suddenly disappeared a year ago. I didn't expect. Oh. Clatter. Clatter. Da da da. There was a dull sound of clogs stepping on the ground, and at the end of the road, a blind man in purple clothes came out. He seems, a bit familiar. Since Fujitora was traveling in casual clothes today, Marine's cloak of justice was not worn behind her back. Saint Kalmak was shocked and angry. As a noble of the world of celestial dragons, ordinary untouchables are not even qualified to look directly at him whenever he travels. However, now, first he was hit by a pariah, and then his bullet was stopped. For Saint Kalmak, this is simply, an unprecedented event. Lord Kalmak, he is Marine. CP0 on the side quickly whispered in his ear and winked at his companion next to him. Forget it if he is an ordinary Marine, Ishiao is a candidate admiral, and I heard that he is still the most promising candidate by naval headquarters. Although he joined Marine halfway, he has the support of Marine Admiral Atlas, the strongest man in the world today. If there is a conflict with the Celestial Dragons, it will definitely be rotten shrimps like them that suffer in the end. Marine. What about Marine? They are just our slaves. Charmak was indignant, feeling that his identity as a descendant of the Creator had been challenged. The CP0 also understood immediately, stepped on the ground continuously with his feet, and turned into an afterimage and rushed to Ishiao. Mr. Ishiao, this is Lord Celestial Dragons. There was a hint of threat in his humble tone. Although his strength is far inferior to Ishiao, he relies on the world's noble celestial dragons. Even if he is just a dog, he is proud of it. Ignoring CP Zero's shouting, he smiled and passed by the other party, walking towards the girl who was lying limply on the ground. 
Are you, Mr. Ishiao? The girl was completely immersed in uncontrollable panic, feeling a huge shadow shrouding her, and raised her pretty chin with tears in her eyes. As the top officer of Sabaeti's marine base, Ishiao appears quite frequently in the residence site. Therefore, the girl recognized him at a glance. Ishiao nodded slowly towards the girl, his closed eyes showed a hint of whiteness, and his heart was filled with turmoil. When the crime really happened in front of him, the inner voice made it impossible for him to escape. Thinking about the future and ignoring the crimes happening in front of you is a real insult to justice, right? Isha suddenly thought of the word justice behind him, and the conversation when he first met Atlas. My heart became more determined. Smile Vice Admiral, could you please save Cleveland? The girl begged with tears in her eyes. Cleveland, her fiancé, disappeared in the Sabaeti archipelago a year ago. She searched for him for a year without success. When she wanted to give up, she didn't expect to see him under the celestial dragon's ass. However, the warnings she had received since childhood reminded her. Celestial dragons are not to be messed with. However, the human heart is still fleshy after all. After seeing that scene of blood and flesh flying everywhere, she couldn't help but run out. The moment she faced the bullet, she was frightened and her mind went completely blank. But now that things have come to this, she can only help with a smile, and this has become the only marine she can rely on at this time. At the very least, as a marine, he has the courage to stand up and challenge the authority of the celestial dragons. Saint Charma. Please give this lady's fiancé his freedom, please. He said slowly with a smile. Although the words were polite, it was not the tone a marine should use toward celestial dragons. As soon as these words came out, the civilians kneeling on the ground around them were greatly shocked. What does this marine, want to do? A bad premonition came to mind. Hearing Ishiao's words, Cleveland, who was lying on all fours on the ground, had a slightly dull look in his eyes. But it soon fell silent. Marine. What are you talking about? Stinky Marine. Saint Kalmak almost thought he had heard wrongly, with an exaggerated expression on his face. Fujitora, smiled, as a Marine, have you forgotten your duties? The person in front of you is a world noble. CP0 on the side felt something bad about Ishiao, felt something was wrong, and quickly scolded him. A cruel smile suddenly appeared on Saint Kalmak's face, Fujitora. Is this the Marine who stopped me from buying a slave? At the same time, he pointed the black gun muzzle at Isha again and quickly pulled the trigger. Boom! The bullet left the chamber, drew a clear trajectory in the air, and shot towards Isha's chest. When? As expected, the bullet seemed to be pressed down by an invisible hand in the air, losing all power and plummeting to the ground. Asshole! You still dare to resist? Kalmak Saint suddenly became a little angry and grabbed a huge musket from a bodyguard in black. The whole body was a mixture of brown and red, like a work of art. Just looking at the body shape, it looks a bit like a mortar. As soon as I took it, before I had time to feel the cold touch, I smiled impatiently. Buzz! The terrifying gravity suddenly fell, and the surrounding vegetation seemed to be distorted. The unprepared Charmico Saint suddenly fell from Cleveland. The CPs around were shocked, but at the same time their knees weakened and they fell to the ground, staring in the direction of Ishiao with frightened eyes. This guy, actually dares to attack Celestial Dragons. Celestial Dragons are world nobles protected by Marine Admiral. This is the Sabaeti Archipelago, and Admiral Kazaru can reach it almost as quickly as possible. And the alternate admiral, is just an alternate after all. Duh duh duh. Ignoring the horrified CPs, he slowly walked towards Chalmers with a smile, his closed eyes seeming to be sizing up Cleveland. Although he couldn't see it, the strong smell of blood almost filled his nostrils, making him frown. Click. Relying on his knowledge, Ishao accurately pinched the slave collar around Cleveland's neck. 
Cleveland's eyes finally showed some emotional fluctuations, he opened his dry mouth, and some vague syllables came out of his mouth, no. No. Key. The slave collar can be said to be a sinful invention of the sea. As long as there is no key, it cannot be opened unless the hockey master is advanced. Ishiao showed a reassuring smile, and hockey surged from his hand, quickly destroying the internal structure of the slave collar. Boom! The collar fell and made a crisp impact sound. Two bloody marks on Cleveland's neck were revealed, but he didn't seem to notice at all. Instead, he stood up with a look of disbelief on his face, his eyes became brighter and his body became straighter. It was as if an insurmountable mountain had been suddenly removed, and it was. Cleveland Dash. The girl reluctantly stood up and threw herself into Cleveland's arms with a look of joy on her face. The huge impact almost made the seriously injured body lose his balance. Gina, thank you, my girl. Cleveland gently kissed Gina's smooth forehead, looking intoxicated. Seeing this scene, the surrounding crowd instantly went crazy. Am I reading that right? Marine attacked the celestial dragons. What does Mr. Isha want to do? Will Marine send out Admiral? What are you afraid of? Let's not mention that Mr. Isha himself is a Marine, and I heard that he was introduced to Marine by Bai Jian Admiral. Hi. There is such a relationship involved. Then Marine is going to have a falling out with the world government. What are you thinking? Without world government, there would be no Marine. The annual military expenditure alone cannot sustain Marine. Because they were not affected by the gravity field, the people around them began to talk. Maybe it was the heart of eight trigrams, or maybe it was Marine's own affairs. They had never seen it before, but it actually made them look forward to the follow up development. Marine, how to choose? A question slowly emerged in everyone's mind, and then spread to the island at an extremely fast speed. Celestial dragons, were beaten by Marine. Headquarters, Marine Ford. Dong dong dong. The door to the conference room was knocked loudly, blocking the five elders' next words. Come in. Although he had long expected that the five old guys were going to take action against Marine, Sengoku didn't expect it to happen so quickly, and he felt a little annoyed for a moment. Bump. After receiving the order, the door was violently pushed open from the outside. A marine colonel looked panicked, as if something terrible had happened. Hua, Marshal Sengoku. Oh no, the celestial dragons were beaten in Sabaeity. Marine's heart skipped a beat. Kizaru's figure left the screen at some point. If it was just the celestial dragons who were being beaten, the marine who came here wouldn't have such an expression as if the sky was falling. Moreover, the land of Sabaeity is guarded by Ishiao, a candidate admiral. How could any pirate be so bold? Who is it? Crane Vice Admiral looked at the marine colonel with clear eyes and asked the questions in the minds of everyone present. Yes. No need. I've already asked Porcelino to handle this matter. At this time, the phone bug, who had not yet been hung up, made a deep voice. Obviously, the world government had obtained the intelligence information long before Marine. Toot toot. Sengoku suddenly raised his head when he heard the busy tone on the phone, and glanced at the Marine colonel. It's a smile, right? As soon as these words came out, the whole place fell into silence, and you could hear a pin drop. Gulu. The marine colonel swallowed nervously. It was the first time that so many big bosses were paying attention to him. It was impossible not to be nervous. No. Yes, it's Mr. Ishiao. Oh what a coincidence. I just received an order from the five elders. Kizaru appeared again, his wrinkled old face coming closer, and every ravine was clearly visible. Just a smile, but he has the same strength as a monster it's really scary that he wants me to deal with such a man. To be honest, Ishiao's strength is not weaker than the three of them. Haki is top-notch, and his fruit abilities have also been developed to an awakened state. 
If he was asked to run and challenge Xiao, Kizaru really wouldn't be sure. Old man Sengoku, how should we handle this matter? Atlas half-smiled, looking at the troubled Sengoku expectantly. As a marine alternate admiral, Ishiao represents marine to a certain extent. To a certain extent, marine is maintaining the rule of celestial dragons. After all, marine admiral has to be dispatched to protect celestial dragons at any time. Now, the two are in conflict. If it were an ordinary general, Sengoku might not bother to worry. However, Ishiao's own strength is completely enough to bear the highest combat power of Marine, plus there is Atlas. Sengoku stared straight at the smiling Atlas, and suddenly said, How do you want to solve it? Atlas brat. After all, you personally brought a smile into Marine. Hearing this, Crane Vice Admiral also turned his attention to Atlas. Akiji put away his lazy expression and showed an unprecedented serious look. He understood that this guy's words might very well change the pattern of the sea. Akainu, on the other hand, remained motionless, with no fluctuation in his expression, and his body was sitting straight. Atlas' face froze, and he cursed Old Inbi in his mind. Unexpectedly, this guy was very good at Tai Chi, and he kicked the ball to him in a blink of an eye. Sengoku looked at Atlas's expression and felt relieved. This kid, now you know how difficult it is for me to be a marshal, right? Still causing trouble for me all day long. According to the five elders' wishes, I should have wanted to replace you, right? Readjusting his mood, Atlas said seriously, I can't give up on a smile. I personally brought him marine, so I have justice in my heart. There is no way I could let him down. If you point the finger at a person because of a mere scumbag, what's the difference between this and stepping on the head of justice and shitting on him? We all understand what you said, but you have to understand Dash. Crane Vice Admiral raised the hot tea in front of him, took a sip, and said, The current Marine is not an institution independent of the world government. It's just money. Atlas crossed his fingers, leaned forward, and smiled. I know that the world government has been trying to curb Marine's military spending, so I have been prepared for it. Oh. Sorry, can I interrupt? Five elders has sent someone to hurry up. Kizaru suddenly raised his hand to indicate, pouting and speaking slowly. Atlas was stunned, and then there was an intriguing look on his face. Don't want to get involved. That's really interesting, Porosalino Senpai. Although, Kizaru is the most Buddhist among the three admirals, and he also sounds like the one with the least firm belief. After all, ambiguous justice, is too ambiguous. In fact, he is the most sober one. In other words, I read too many books, see too many things, think too much, and always have a detached attitude towards worldly affairs. Porosalino. Sengoku looked at Kizaru with some confusion. Let Senior Porosalino go first. At least he can send some good signals to the world government. Atlas interrupted Sengoku. The twisted melon quenches thirst, but is not sweet at all. Although Kizaru didn't stand firmly on their side, at least his but was leaning towards Marine. Seeing Kizaru remove the projector, Atlas continued, Does the Soviet Chamber of Commerce know? That legendary chamber of commerce that controls 15% of the world's baileys. Crane Vice Admiral has heard a little bit about it. Although it has not been around for a long time, the chamber of commerce's influence spreads all over the world and all corners of the Grand Line. According to rumors, they seem to be inextricably linked to Nine Snake Island. In the underground world, it is even more intricate, and it is already a behemoth. You were behind it, right? Sengoku was thoughtful, as if everything suddenly became clear. Old man Sengoku, do you know? Atlas was surprised and a little surprised. Although the current Soviet Chamber of Commerce is not like before, it controls 20% of the world's baileys. After all, taking the right path alone won't work in many things. The golden belt of murder and arson, whoever can make money quickly is always written in the law. I don't know. Sengoku said confidently. 
but it's still a bit of a guess. When you mention it like this, I can almost understand it. Sengoku said seriously, so, what are you going to do? He repeated the question again, but clearly it wasn't just for a smile. Marine's choice can't be made just by talking about white fan. World conscription. Through the screen, Atlas is full of life and sound. Due to limited military spending, Marine's middle and lower level troops are already somewhat stretched. While top level combat capabilities are important, the role of grassroots soldiers cannot be ignored either. After all, Marine Admiral doesn't have the time to drill all over the world every day. For the operation of a war weapon, parts and components are also indispensable. Although the wealth of the Soviet Chamber of Commerce is amazing, it is probably not enough to support Marine's independence, right? Sengoku was worried. Pele, who belongs to 15% of the world, seems very generous at first glance, but he has two problems. First, the Chamber of Commerce needs to basically operate, and it is impossible to allocate all funds to support Marine. Otherwise, it is tantamount to fishing in the lake and killing the goose to retrieve the eggs. Second, the Pele is a currency issued by the world government, and the depreciation or appreciation is entirely in the hands of the five elders. As long as they are willing to injure the enemy by 1,000 and injure themselves by 800, they can completely reduce the wealth in the hands of the Soviet Chamber of Commerce. The World Summit is coming soon, right? Atlas did not answer directly, but said something confusing. Sabaeti Archipelago After subduing the restless celestial dragons and CP bodyguards, Ishiao sat cross-legged on the spot, with the staff and knife flat on his thigh, quietly waiting for Marine's movement. He wants to see if Marine's justice, is worth his protection. Mr. Ishiao, please leave as soon as possible. Injuring the celestial dragons will alert the Marine Admiral. Yes, even though you are also a Marine, injuring celestial dragons is also an unforgivable, crime. If you don't leave, it will be too late. This place is not very far from naval headquarters. The people gathered around persuaded him earnestly. Maybe there was a panic at the beginning that Celestial Dragons was being beaten, for fear that they would be implicated. But as time went by, the people around him gradually calmed down and began to make plans for Ishiao. After all, no one doesn't hate Celestial Dragons, a thing that is almost evil to the core. But I respect them from the bottom of my heart. Ever since, a marine appeared and dared to break this awe, which was undoubtedly equivalent to a beam of light shining in the darkness. Ishiao pursed his lips and chuckled, looking up towards the sky, as if to respond to everyone, here he comes. Outside the island. This time there were no artillery shells to greet him, so Kizaru could only land on Sabaeti land honestly. As soon as he entered the island, Kizaru was a little surprised. Without him, it would be too peaceful. There was peace and tranquility in what he saw, heard, and perceived. It is completely different from the killings and crimes of the past. If he remembered correctly, the location he was standing on was Area 29, where crime was prevalent in the past. Now not only are the pirates less visible, but most of their negative emotions have been visibly reduced. For the first time, he suddenly wavered about the choice he had just made. However, he was quickly suppressed again. He is just, a wage earner who wants to fish and clock in. Putting his hands in his pockets, he looked at the surrounding scenery and walked slowly towards Area 32 where Ishiao was. He seemed indifferent to the defeat of the Celestial Dragons, but he was quite interested in what he saw and heard along the way. New World G5 Base Atlas cut off the signal source, ending the symposium on how to rebel against the world government. Boom, boom, boom. A knock on the door sounded at the right time. Didn't I tell you everything? Ein, you don't need to knock on the door when you come in. Atlas said helplessly. He had noticed it a long time ago. Ein was waiting outside the door when the meeting started. Ein pushed the door open and said with a serious face, no, you are the superior after all, and, and if it were you. As he spoke, 
a blush spread on Ayn's fair face. Atlas was stunned. As you were talking, why are you blushing? Those who didn't know thought that Lousy had done some unspeakable things while he was alone in the office. Report to Atlas Admiral that a man named Buck came to the base and said that you promised him to be included in Marine. Ayn reported loudly. Buck. Atlas struggled to search for impressions of this person in his mind. Smoker Commodore said he was someone you met when you arrested Nine Tails Fox. Ayn reminded in a low voice. It's him. How is he doing now? Atlas had the impression that he was a young man with red hair and a mohawk hairstyle. He was recuperating in the medical room. He drifted here holding a wooden board. In bad weather like New World, you are lucky to be able to save a life while going out to sea alone. Well, let's throw him to the recruiting camp after he recovers from his injury. With his willpower, his future achievements will not be bad. As he said that, he stood up and said, I want to go back to the headquarters alone. You can help me deal with the remaining documents. After saying that, the power of the rabbit charm was activated, and the whole person instantly turned into an afterimage and disappeared into the office. Ayn was left with a messy face. Sabaeity Archipelago. He stood up slowly with a smile, half opening and half closing his staff and sword, everyone, please stay out of the way. You may be accidentally injured later. As soon as he finished speaking, golden light particles appeared, gradually converging into a human shape, and the sound of being beaten slowly spread. It's really scary to manage the Sabaeity Archipelago in such an orderly manner. Kizaru pouted and looked down at the dark crowd below. Admiral of Headquarters, Kizaru. Boom. In surprise, the surrounding birds and beasts immediately dispersed, and the venue suddenly became empty. Only the unconscious celestial dragons and the CPs in black were left. Your Excellency Porcelino is here to arrest me. You injured the celestial dragons. The five elders have promised you that you will be arrested. This is really distressing for me. Kizaru said in a low voice, his wrinkled face seemed to be really distressed. How can you, as a marine, stand by and watch evil happen before your eyes? Do you deserve the justice behind you? Ishao asked calmly. But the words were filled with an angry tone, seeming to question marine's justice, Kizaru's justice, and marine's justice. Rules once they are established, it takes time and strength to break them, so. Do you have the strength to break the rules? Your Excellency Ishiao. Before he finished speaking, Kizaru crossed his arms, and countless light particles appeared on his fingertips. The dazzling golden light spread out, and the entire sky above the Sabaeity Archipelago was illuminated extremely brightly, and the terrifying energy gathered in an instant. Eight-foot beautiful Magatama.